Hello, my sewing friends. Let's sew something purple. I'm Jen, and this is my sewing room, and I would love to put this on for you since it is the only purple thing in my closet. It's a little bolero jacket that I wore for my daughter's wedding, um, I don't know, about mm, eight years ago. And somehow, it's gotten smaller. Not sure how that happened. Possibly I got bigger, but I'm sure that is not the case. <laughs> I want to talk to you about purple today, about sewing something purple, about sewing something purple to support a challenge, which is all about funding um, the work that goes into a cure for Alzheimer's. This is a challenge that is being done by my good friend, Michelle, from Michelle Sews Again. This is the second year that she's done this. And basically, it's to draw attention to Alzheimer's, the disease, and also to the ways that we can contribute to um, finding a cure or treatment or slowing it down or something. It is the most underfunded uh, research in the U.S., ALZ, Alzheimer's, is the most common form of dementia. My grandfather was diagnosed with that. Um, he didn't die from it, but that's the thing that we don't often realize. Alzheimer's is fatal. It's fatal because it's a degenerative disease in your brain. And while the first symptoms are things like memory loss and confusion and that kind of thing, it progresses to the point where your brain can't tell your heart to beat. It can't tell your lungs to breathe. It eventually shuts down to the point where your brain can't communicate anymore with your body, and so your body fails. So this is serious stuff, and it needs to be uh, treated, slowed down, and even better cured. So that's about Alzheimer's. Michelle, her dad passed away from Alzheimer's, and I'm going to link a video up here and also in the description box where she talks about that. And she also talks about all the details of this challenge. It's an Instagram challenge, basically a charity event. And I'm going to tell you some of the details, but really, Michelle can uh, explain the entire thing. And I don't want to reinvent the wheel here because she's been doing collaborations with people every single day in September for this. So it gets repeated a lot if you watch a lot of the same people that I do. The challenge goes from September 1st until the 30th, so the whole month. The challenge is to make something purple. Then uh, you take a picture of it and you post it on Instagram. And these two things are the most important thing with that. You wanna put the hashtag that I've got here and you also want to tag Michelle. So in your description on Instagram, just put the little at uh, sign uh, symbol and then put her name. The real Michelle sews again. I'll also put that here. Simple, huh? Yeah, and there are even prizes. So check out Michelle's video. Like I say, both um, linked in the cards and also down below, and you can find out even more about it. Well, Remember I said she was doing these collabs every day? Well, she got in touch with me and said, hey, that Simplicity 8640 that you always like to make, how about we both make one of those and we do it in purple? I said, I'm in. Of course, all she had to say was 8640 and I would have been in because that is my favorite dress. So let me tell you about what I made. It's right here. This, I'm not wearing this because it's not for me. It's for my daughter. And I did this fabric for a couple of reasons. First of all, it has a lot of purple in it. It may read as blue, but there's a whole lot of purple going on in this fabric. This is a cotton poplin, and it is something that was given to me by Michelle. She had ice dyed it which she is really good at and uh, has done a lot of. And if you want to know about that, go to her channel and just look through her videos because she's got a ton of stuff on it. But I, she ice dyed it as a uh, shower curtain for her husband's bathroom. 
it didn't turn out quite exactly the way she wanted, but obviously it's fantastic. So she sent it to me. So, you know, I thought, oh, even better to make that 8640 out of that fabric. Let me tell you about this dress. Um, yeah, not like I haven't talked to about it endlessly, but I do want to tell you some key things about it. First of all, if you saw this in the pattern catalogs, you would probably look at it and go, no, that's what I did. I looked at this styling and I thought, there is no way that I would love a dress like that. I bought it because I thought, oh, it's very unstructured. Maybe um, my artistic daughter would like that. Well, it has since been reissued because Simplicity got a clue and used this instead. So if you look for it in the books, it's going to look like this. And this is a much better shot of what it really looks like. Here are the line drawings. I usually make this one. This is the dress. This is the tunic. Now they call it a tunic, but it's just a shorter dress, really. I don't know why they even call it a tunic. I love this dress. I love this dress so much and I encourage people to make it all the time because it is loose fitting, it's easy to wear, it's very breezy. You can do it sleeveless or you can do it with sleeves. And here are the fabrics that they recommend. They say batiks, chalet, rayon chalet, which I've used most of the time when I've made this dress, chambray, cotton types, crepe, gauze, and linen types, and jacquard. Now the jacquards, I don't know about that. Mm. It also says not suitable for plaid stripes or one-way designs. Yeah, I don't know about that either. It comes in sizes 10 to 28, so relatively size inclusive. When I make this, I make a 14, but I also use a half inch seam allowance as I do with most things I make, which gains me a full inch when it comes to a finished garment measurement. This does list on the back of the envelope the, the finished bust measurements for all of the sizes. So if you're gonna choose a size, you should probably go from there. Um, mine, uh, the 14 says a, a bust of 41, and I have a lot of room here, you can tell. It's actually about 43 if I stretch it out like that. But here is where fabric is so critical. You really need something soft and drapey, but it needs to have some stability to it. And I say this because I've also made it in a knit. I've made it in, let's see, I've made it eight times, <laughs> actually nine times, but one was for um, a friend of mine. I made it the first time in rayon, the second time in rayon, the third time in an Oxford cloth stripe, which I have a video about, and I underlined it. That was a bad idea, but that's the one that my daughter loves. I made it in a rayon poplin stripe. I made it in a poly cotton uh, tropical print from Hawaii Fabric Mart, and I have a sew along for that that I'll link right up there. And I did it again in a rayon. This is the rayon that I used. And then I did it in a cotton poplin, which was this. And then finally, I tried doing it in a cotton knit. And the cotton knit is, it behaves like this rayon does. Obviously it's stretchy, but you don't have to really worry about that because it's got enough stability because it's cotton. I would not try this in a rayon knit not a viscose knit. I think you would, you would cry. <laughs> I wouldn't try it in that. So there are three things about this dress that I want to tell you that I always do or have done and have made it a lot easier to do. First of all, the pockets. The pockets on this dress, can you see how low these are? on her, she's got to extend her full arm in order to get her hand into these pockets. So when you make this dress and you want to make those pockets, please raise them up to a height on the dress, on the skirt, that you can easily put your hands in them. Be aware they're too low. Now, when it comes to pockets, I have done a whole variety of them because you never have to do what the pattern says. 
uh, probably two or three times I've done, maybe four times out of the nine, I've done side seam pockets, which is what I have here. I have side seam pockets on this one, but I've done a whole host of patch pockets too. I've done ones that look like the back of jeans. I've done a curved bottom. I've done a square. I've done ones that tie at the top. You can do whatever kind of pockets you want. And that's really important to remember. You do not have to be stuck with what they give you. And you certainly don't want it stuck where they want it on the skirt. Second thing I want to tell you, top stitching. This calls for facings on the neckline and also on the armholes, unless you put in sleeves. I don't like facings. As a general rule, I don't like how they want to flip up, flip out. You always have to be aware of what you're doing. And so, you know, you haven't turned in such a way that your facing sticking out. I hate that. But I fix that by top stitching. And uh, I also understitch. Well, you should always understitch a facing anyway to help it roll to the inside. But these are about, I don't know, probably three inch wide facings. So what I do is I go around, after I put it in, I understitch it, I you know finish the bottom edge of the facing. And what I do is I stitch it, I top stitch it one inch away from the edge. And that holds it down, gives it a nice finished, you know, professional kind of look. It's not as dressy a look. If you're making this out of a dressier fabric, like a crepe, I probably wouldn't do that. I would just uh, anchor the facings by stitching in the ditch at the shoulder seam and also at the side seams. But, you know, that's up to you. I like that top stitching because it really does help anchor everything. And with top stitching, you can also top stitch on the seams. Now it does call for you to top stitch down the, the center front seam. And I can't remember if it's, <laughs> I never look at the directions anymore, but I can't remember if you're supposed to top stitch the, um, the bodice seams, which would be these. I do know it calls for you to top stitch the center back seam. And what they tell you to do is fold the seam to one side and then top stitch down like a quarter of an inch away, which looks a little off to me. I don't like doing it that way because it looks like it's asymmetrical and I don't like that. So I've done it a whole host of ways. You can open the seam out and top stitch. You can do whatever you want. I've even put piping on these uh, bodice seams. Now the bodice is cut so that the slanted part is on the straight of grain and everything else is on the bias. So. You know, when it says don't use stripes, that just means you're gonna to have to match the stripes if you want it to look right. So I've done it where the stripes are going like this and it's worked fine. Third thing, the hem. I have done the hem all kinds of ways. Now, the way that they tell you to do it is basically like this. This is what it looks like. Here is the front, here is the back. You sew the side seam right here. And when you open it out, it looks like this. This can be tricky because it's a curve and you've got to uh, deal with the corner here and the curve. So if you're gonna do this particular hemline, then I would suggest you stitch 5 eighths of an inch away, turn it up, turn it up again, and that 5 eighths of an inch stitching will kind of act like an ease stitching when it comes to this curve. Here's how I've also done it. I've also done it in a triangle. So front, back, side seam. This is how it looks. It hangs kind of like this. I've also done it. In fact, this one is done like this where I completely reversed it. Um, I didn't go down like that. I went like this. This is an easy one to do, but again, you're dealing with that curve, so keep that in mind. And then when you do, um, well, a lot of times, a lot, like on the knit one, it ends up looking like this. So it's a much wider version of this first one. If you do uh, the dress, it's going to come out wider. It's going to come out more like this, which this isn't as hard to do because the curve isn't as dramatic. So those are the hemlines that uh, you can do. I've changed it up. However you wanna do it, it always 
does recommend, well, no matter what kind of a side design that you put, um, it calls for that narrow hem. So yeah, just some things to keep in mind if you're gonna switch it up, but I would highly encourage you to do that. If you have fitting issues, remember that you've got side seams and that center back seam to be able to adjust. Uh, Trish, a friend of mine, um, even thought maybe she'd put ties on it to be able to pull it in a little in the back. That's what I love about this dress is that it's loose fitting, but you still do have some semblance of shape because of these seams right here. Go see Michelle's version of this. I am sure it will be fabulous. I haven't seen it yet. I can't wait to see it and um, give it a try. It's a great dress and you may love it, but be careful with your fabrics. Just be aware of all of those things that I've just told you. I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Go over to Instagram and give a look to all of the so purple to end ALZ 22 kinds of things that everybody's made. And as always, do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. I want to do that every day and I hope you do too.